Hello and assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome back to the third and the final session on our discussion on ISQM1, International Standards on Quality Management 1. Now, by the time if you've watched the first session and the second one, I hope you're gaining interest and confidence on this particular topic and the change uh, impacting the September 22 exams and onwards. And you're trying to understand this is not a big change. Everything is what you must have studied in the AAA syllabus by now. It's just the incremental impact of two further components added to ISQM1, which is the firm risk assessment process and information and communication. We've already covered the first four in the second session, and we reach till acceptance and continuation of client relationship. So let's start the last four from engagement performance onwards. So let's start with the fifth element of the SOQM. Now, when you look at the fifth element of SOQM, engagement performance, we know even in the ISQC1, when you look at the case study in exam paper for AAA, and you are looking at the issues in a case study, when a question asks for quality management, professional and ethical issues, the problem relates with how the engagement has been. We, we do find less issues pertaining to leadership or governance, or we do find less issues pertaining to uh, acceptance or ethical issues, but we do find more issues pertaining to engagement performance in a case study. How the engagement has been performed, a lot of issues relating to direction, supervision, a review of the work perform, et cetera. Let's see uh, what engagement performance is just for a re refresher, though it's the same content you have in the ISQC1 you must have studied prior but let's just do a refreshing and take some examples. Engagement teams, which is the one responsible for performing the audit, must understand their responsibilities for ensuring a quality audit, number one. So understanding of the responsibilities of the team, they know what they have to do, how they have to do to ensure they are gathering sufficient appropriate audit evidence. Less experienced team members should be appropriately supervised and reviewed. Look at this statement. Less experienced team members should be less experienced team members should be appropriately supervised and reviewed. ISQM1 specifically ref uh, give references to the need for the audit partner to be sufficiently and appropriately involved throughout the process of the audit. Now, three things. First of all, the team members should be aware of their responsibilities, number one. Second, there has to be, there needs to be a proper supervision of the less experienced team members, like the juniors. The juniors need to be supervised well for them to do the work rightly. More guidance, more supervision more check and balance is needed for the junior members. And lastly, the partner needs to ensure, the engagement partner, the one who signs the audit report, needs to ensure that he's appropriately involved uh, throughout the engagement. Now, that doesn't mean he's conducting the field work. We know there are areas where the partner gets involved. We know the partner gets involved at the planning stage, at the acceptance stage. The partner gets involved at the review and finalization stage. There is a regular consultation of the manager with the partner. The manager keeps updating the partner on difficulties, issues, problems. Uh, so the partner knows the problems going on in the audit. There has to be a regular consultation between the manager and the partner so that the partner is involved in the audit. You don't expect partner doing the field work, performing the substantive procedures, test of control procedures. No, that doesn't. that is not the meaning of the last sentence you're looking at on your screen. The partner needs to be involved where there is a need, where he should be involved in a critical areas like completion, review and finalization, communication with TCWG, communication with audit committees, uh, discussing the important issues, etc. So that is the performance. Performance in terms of team being responsible, performance in terms of less experienced team members being supervised, and performance in terms of the partner being appropriately involved. Now, when you're looking at a case, if you believe that the less experienced team members are not being supervised properly, you can identify that as an issue. Uh, if the team is not aware of their responsibilities, you can identify that as an issue. If the partner is not appropriately involved, we believe partner is very, partner attitude is not demonstrating that he's appropriately involved in the audit, you can invest, identify that as an issue too. Next. 
audit team should ensure professional skepticism and judgment as exercised. So if you're reading a case and you believe the team was less skeptical, the team was not taking the right judgments, you can criticize this in exam and say this is against the quality management because you need to exercise skeptic, skeptical mindset to challenge uh, the statements, to challenge the estimations of the management. Process should ensure professional skepticism and judgments are exercised by the team. If, if there is proper supervision, if there is proper direction, this will happen. But if the manager is absent, the manager is busy, the manager is away, and the manager is not conducting a supervision of the audit, then how would you ensure a professional skepticism has been performed? We have seen so many times the, the manager fell ill, the manager was away, the manager was absent in the past papers, even in September 18 paper, the manager fell ill, he was absent from the audit. If such issues are taking place, then again, exercising professional skepticism becomes difficult. So you can relate that with the case study. The last one, if an audit team has insufficient time to perform procedures, or the team members are not experienced enough to challenge management or identify misstatements, the detection risk increases and the quality will be compromised. True. We, we see past papers where the situations are, there is a time rush, there is a time panic. You are running out of time. And because you are running out of time, the manager says, leave the procedures. The manager says, reduce the sample size. These are wrong judgments. These are against quality management. These are against engagement performance. Needs to be challenged. So if you're running out of time, it could be bad because of the bad supervision. You're running out of time, it could be bad because the manager was absent. He was not in the audit. He was running, you're running out of time, that means the partner was not adequately involved in the audit. So if you're not challenging management, you're not exercising the skeptical mindset, you are increasing the detection risk and compromising the quality. So in a case study, if you believe you're not challenging, you're running out of time, you are not exercising the judgment, the less experienced members are not supervised, uh, the team is not aware of responsibilities, you can connect things in the case study and link them down to the quality management saying this, this affects the quality of the audit, this compromise the quality management of the audit. So engagement performance and looking at the issues in front of the screen, they're all similar to the one you used to see in the past papers. Further engagement performance. For audits to be effective and to maintain public trust, they must be performed in such a way to ensure that the audit report issues are appropriate in the circumstances. We've already covered this point previously, right? The right audit report is to be issued and for that things need to be managed well. If, if if the performance is not well, just the one we got on the last slide, if there are issues with the bullets in the last slide, then you will not be issuing the right opinion. Detection risk will go up. The second bullet, the SOQM should ensure that the teams can consult on difficult matters. Differences of opinions with engagement teams are addressed and any issues raised by the engagement quality control reviewers are brought to the attention of the firms and resolved. Team can consult. Beautiful point. There has to be a consultation between the team on difficult issues. You might come across problems, issues, management not giving you evidence, management not behaving well, management is very aggressive, management is not providing you support documents. Such issues will come when you're performing the audit. Audit cannot be a smooth sailing, right? Audit cannot be a smooth sailing. There might be difference of opinions between you and the management. There might be difference of accounting treatments between you and the management. Such issues need to be consulted between the seniors and the managers, between the team members and the managers. And such issues should also be communicated from the manager to the partner so that things are, things are dealt with and the issues are mitigated, the issues are resolved. And if the issues are not resolved, then the impact on the audit report is, uh, is, is investigated. Further details on aspects of engagement performance will be covered in the part two of the examiner article. We know engagement performance uh, is also the parameter of ISA 220. Uh, how you perform an audit, how you perform an audit, individual audit. So ISA 220 will give us further guidance on engagement performance, but this itself is sufficient for your exam context. So we'll need to wait for the second article coming on the same parameter. Moving towards the last few resources, that was assignment of the team under the ISQC1 previously. So under the ISQC1, you must have studied assignment of team, which has now become resources. 
A firm must ensure that appropriate resources are available in a timely manner. This includes employees with the required competence, training, and capabilities to perform engagement. Now, appropriate resources, competent resources, trained resources, capable resources. A firm needs to invest a lot on training and development, right? Again, the bigger firms, because again, this is an SOQM, which varies from a firm to firm. Now, there are big firms which invest a lot in training and development, which, uh, which, uh, which invest a lot in building up the capabilities of their employees, of their resources to deliver better audits. So a firm must ensure appropriate resources are available in a timely manner and the resources are capable, up-to-date, competent, proper trainings are given to them. So in a case study, if you believe that the firm approach to training and development is inappropriate, criticize that. If you believe the resources are not competent enough, you will criticize the firm policies towards building training and development programs. If you believe the staff is not capable and has been assigned to the audit, you will criticize uh, the decisions that this is a wrong decision of uh, allocating an incapable staff uh, to an audit of a risky area because that will compromise the sufficiency and appropriateness of the evidence. These are all interlinked matters, right? Firms should ensure more experienced individuals to work in the areas of complex nature, requiring additional judgments and ensuring sufficient review by senior team members for adequate time to do testings and analysis, etc. Experienced team members, right, in complex areas. Again, this can become an issue in exam paper where a complex area has been given to a less experienced staff member. And this has been common phenomena, right? So competent resource, capable resource, training and development, allocating work to the right person, assignment of the team. That used to be an ISQC1. Allocating the right work to the right person. Allocating the risky areas to a senior member, not to a junior member. So they can exercise judgment. They can careful. They can have sufficient appropriate audit evidence are extracted. Consideration should be made of using experts because not in every area you will be an expert. We know auditor use the work of an expert. We know auditor hires expert. We know auditor relies on expert. In like environmental areas, you need to use the work of an expert. In like uh, the technological areas, you need to use the work of an expert. In the valuations, some very critical valuations, you need to use the work of an expert. Fair value assessments, you need to use the work of an expert. So expert, engaging expert as a resource and engaging expert as part of the team as, is a very important, right? And you know, there is a criteria of using the work of an expert, which should not be compromised. Otherwise, that will also hit the SOQM. You know, there is a criteria of using the work of an expert in ISA 620, independence, competence, experience, and everything. That needs to be maintained. New element. This is new. Information and communication, but something easy to understand. We have been discussing consultations between manager and partner, consultation between the team and the manager, information and communication, right? But let's see what this new element, uh, which is added as part of the system of quality management for firms has to do and how exactly you can think about it in an exam context. Information and communication are required to enable other components of SOQM to operate. Wonderful, right? Because without information and communication, you cannot take any decisions as an audit partner. You cannot take any any decision about even accepting a client. Can you take a decision about accepting a client without information and communication, even information from the previous auditor, communication from the previous auditor, etc.? You cannot take decisions uh, unless and until you have appropriate knowledge of business. Full stop. The next point. This include obtaining information generating information and using information and communicating the information within the firm. For example, communicating policies to personals, communication of information obtained during an audit with an engagement quality control reviewer uh, or communication between group and the component auditor. So many examples throughout your AAA syllabus. If, if there is a money laundering issue, communicating the money laundering issue to your MLRO. If there is... Uh, a breach of a law and regulation, communicating that to a regulator, external. If there is a, a difference of opinion between the management and the auditor on an accounting treatment, communicating that to your engagement partner so the engagement partner can think about the right impact on the audit opinion. So it's the communication, not just within the team, 
It's your communication with your partners. It's your communication with the audit committee. It's your communication with those charged with governance. It's your communication with a regulator, the external. So communication, communication even between the group auditor and the component auditor. How many times you've seen questions where a group auditor communicates with a subsidiary auditor? So communication is a broader process here, right? But communication is important because communication will result in implementing the right things. And communication has to be in a timely manner. And lots of communication is to be documented as well. We'll come to that shortly. It includes the external communications, right? To TCWG as well or to a regulator. Not just the communication within the firm, but communication out of the firm with, with TCWG. So why TCWG WG is external? Because we're thinking outside the firm, the client, the client or a regulator. The full range of information or communication within the SOQM is extensive. That is what the examiner is telling us in the article. The slides to follow, just consider a few examples. Now, these are the few examples of uh, information and communication which the examining team has given us in the article. Uh, which is covered on the next slide. Now, there's so much information and communication, right, which takes place during the process of the audit uh, between the team, the team and the partner, TCWG, audit committee, regulator, MLRO, and a lot of communication is documented. Uh, so let's see some examples of the formal documented communications which takes place during the process of the audit. And in, in an exam case study, uh, if you believe uh, such communications are not taking place or the communications between the appropriate structure isn't relevant, you believe uh, communications are not taking place between the examples I've just given you, you will criticize that and you will tell why such communications are important. And you will then also be telling this is against the quality management or this is against the SOQM. Look at the list of information and communication, a more formal one given in ISQM1. On the left-hand side of the screen, first the communication about ethical areas firm policies on ethics. You should communicate the firm policies on ethics to your, to your personnel. They're aware of it. Till the time you don't communicate the firm policies, how will they know about ethics and safeguards? Number two, training, material. You should provide them training materials for ethics. You should give them tra uh, training manuals where ethical issues and safeguards are discussed. So training material is part of your communication, training on ethical issues. Register of training undertaken. You should maintain a register in the audit firm as an evidence of communication, as an evidence that the training has been provided. And a register should be maintained to know how many trainings have been given and on which subject matter. You should also maintain an attendance register, how many personnel attended the training. Completed declaration on independence. There has to be a declaration from every member of the audit team before they start the audit that we are independent of the client. We don't have any familiarity relationships. We don't have, we don't have any ethical issues with the client. So a declaration, a written declaration from every member of the audit team is part and parcel of that information and communication. Examples, right? Just to tell you how important communication is and at times the communication needs to be reflected as an evidence. So if you don't have evidence, uh, probably you will have a question mark on evidence on communication. Okay, sorry for that. Just had a bit of cough and needs to cover up that. Uh, second, client acceptance and continuation on the right-hand side of the screen. Risk assessment documented. You should document the risk assessment. You should document the results of risk assessment as a proper communication. Client identity documents obtained in store. So the communication, the information, sorry, you got about the client identification, the documents of the client needs to be documented very well. The information you got out of the risk assessment process needs to be documented. Engagement letters needs to be documented because engagement letter is an, another information and communication, right? So look at the formal documentations, the formal structures of communications at every possible stage of the audit. Next, information and communication at the time of engagement performance. At the time of engagement performance, information and communication consist of the audit programs devised and produced. Audit programs, right? The checklist, 
of how, what sort of substantive procedures, what sort of test of control procedures would you do on every area of the audit? So an audit program is a proper information which is shared with the audit team so they know how to do and what to do. Role assignments delegated and recorded. If you are delegating someone a role that you're telling the junior you have to do this, you're telling the senior you have to do this, document that. So at the end of the day, you can make them accountable. Document what junior has to do, document what senior has to do and ensure they've done that. So document the roles. Client information obtained and input into the automated audit tools. Whatever information you obtain about client during the course of the audit, document that. Working papers, right? Working papers, whether you're maintaining them on a computer or manual. Automated means on, on the computer system. Conclusions, whatever conclusions you have reached on critical areas of the audit, that should be documented as well in the audit file in the working papers. Reports to TCWG, reports on internal control deficiencies, report on different differences on the accounting treatment, reports on issues faced during audit. We know there is a report under ISA 260 and ISA 265, communication with those charged with governance 260. 265 that is part and parcel of that information and communication so in an exam paper from september 22 onwards in a case study on quality management ethical and professional issues you might find inappropriate communications you might find inappropriate documentations you might find examples of these documentations given by examiner in the case study you might find certain documentations are not done well <laughs> sorry you might find certain communications have not taken place in the context of this information and communication and you uh, criticize that you tell the implication what is the implication of that communication or that documentation not taking place and then you link that this is uh, against the quality management so this is information and communication something natural right all of the things here are covered scatteredly in your syllabus of AAA, but they're now brought under a quality management structure information and communication this was a seventh element, right? Further, the last thing about information and communication. Communication should be made on a timely manner. That's true. Supporting the firm's culture to exchange information where appropriate. For example, where an ethical threat precludes the assignment of a team member to a specific client, the team member should be expected to inform that. Wherever the problem arises, it should be communicated. If, if there is a weakness in the internal control, communicate it appropriately. If there is an ethical issue, communicate it. Don't, don't wait that I'll do it in the end. Don't wait that I'll do it after a certain time. Wherever the problem arises, communicate it in a timely manner. Don't just wait for a certain time to come to communicate. ISQM1 also makes specific reference to external communications, the communications you do to uh, regulators for non-compliance with laws and regulations or to TCWG. So external communications, right, with the regulators, external communication with TCWG, not just the communication within the team, with the partner, with the manager, it's beyond. Communication is a broad spectrum, right? And you all know, you know about these communications in your AAA paper in, in different syllabus areas. Lastly, monitoring. Same as ISQC1, now under ISQM1. Just give me one minute. Now, when you look at monitoring, the SOQM, SOQM, System of Quality Management, whatever that is in a firm, because this needs to be proactive, every firm can have different. Whatever SOQM you have in place, this needs to be monitored, right? Whether the SOQM is delivering, whether the firm policies are adhered, whether the firm policies are followed, whether the firm policies on leadership, whether the firm policies on acceptance, firm policies on ethics, firm policies on engagement performance, firm policies on risk assessment are being followed. Is the system working rightly? Check on the system. Quality management. Monitoring is a check here, right? Let's see what's written in the ISQM about this. The monitoring and monitoring and remit, re, and remitting, uh, remediation process, firms must put in place a process for monitoring the SOQM effectiveness, right? So you should have a process of monitoring to ensure the SOQM is effective and ensure deficiencies are identified and communicated. If there is anything wrong in SOQM, if, if there is any issues in SOQM, 
monitoring will identify those issues and they will be communicated and rectified on a timely basis. Probably your engage, not probably, your engagement quality control reviewer, which the examiner will cover under ISQM2, the next article. <laughs> that person will ensure the monitoring. Right, the engagement quality control reviewer, you know the properties of this person right from your previous syllabus as well. He needs to be independent. Uh, he needs to be independent of the engagement. He needs to be a second partner of the firm. So deficiencies need to be identified and communicated in a timely basis for the system to work robustly. This is a continuous cycle, right? Every year, you have to undertake the monitoring. Every time you need to take, under, uh, just like an internal auditor, right, in the client, Monitoring, ensuring the system works as robustly as possible. So the eight elements, right? Let's bring down a final recap and let's make a holistic approach to your exam papers. So this was the eight elements. The one in the yellows. Just give me one second. The ones in the yellows are the new ones, right? Uh, apart from that, the rest is all what you've learned in IESQC1. But again, at the end of the day, this is nothing new here. You know these things scattered across the syllabus, and you know what you have to do in a question on quality control. Now, I'll, I'll investigate the nature of question. I'll investigate what you have to do in a question. I'll investigate the summary of this IESQ uh, M1 in my fourth and final session right after this one. Take good care of yourself and I'll see you back with a summary and, and, and an investigation of a past paper. Take care. Goodbye and Allah Hafiz.